Hi everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of the Sustainable Cannabis Coalition podcast, in which we talk all things sustainability with some of the most distinguished experts in the cannabis industry. I'm your host, Rodrigo Pereira, VP of Product Management at GrowIQ. Today, I'll be talking with Dean Waters and Eddie Van Pelt from Vimby. Dean is Vimby's founder and CEO, and Eddie is Vimby's CFO and COO. Dean and Eddie will talk about the importance of making sustainability a key component of a cannabis company's story, strategy, and messaging, and how bringing that story and messaging has a positive impact on the bottom line of the company. Dean and Eddie bring a really unique perspective you don't want to miss out. Hi, y'all. Welcome back to a new episode of the Sustainable Cannabis Coalition podcast. Uh, today, we have two really, really special guests, Dean Waters and Eddie Van Pelt from Bimby. Uh, Dean is the founder and CEO. Eddie is the CFO and COO of the company. Gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Rodrigo. Thanks for having us. Uh, a- absolutely. No, a pleasure. And, and thank you guys for, uh, for waking up early on a Wednesday morning to do this. I know it's West Coast time, so I uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate uh, the... <laughs> the uh the early morning that's one that's one of the that's one of the several things dean and i have in common we both wake up super super early so no problem at all (laughs) awesome awesome um guys so before we we jump into the conversation and and we'll be talking about you know storytelling in the context of sustainability and and obviously in cannabis i'd love to hear a little bit more about vimby you know just the story behind it so dean I'll, i'll let you I'll let you take that one uh, and just give us a little bit of background on the company. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh, it's interesting. I, I grew up in Southern California, uh, grew up as a, an avid athlete, played baseball through high school, um, was really into surf skate culture growing up in Los Angeles, um, spent 15 years in the cable industry and, you know, had a ton of success through the 90s and, and really kind of got exposed to you know, incredible media fragmentation. Um, you know, the world was changing. I saw an opportunity. I, I, I left my corporate job and really started chasing kind of, you know, my lifestyle habits over the years and, and looked to launching a consumer platform called Bimby, which really celebrated culture in America, you know, action sports, music, street art, um, everything that I was passionate about or anything that I saw that was bubbling throughout the country, but yet, you know, YouTube had just launched and there really wasn't anything doing a good job of organizing content and really doing it right. So I I really dove in and kind of spent a year doing due diligence and and launching this new platform. Long story short, and and it's been quite a journey, um, you know, 15 years ago, I I launched Bimby. Um, It was a, a place for people to come that kind of enjoyed the same lifestyle elements and kind of gave you an opportunity to be a voyeur into other markets. As an enthusiast, we, we launched Bimby in 20 cities, uh, you know, an attempt to build a destination, super challenging to do that at the time. And, you know, there was a lot of kind of restrictions with content running on MySpace at the time and, and other platforms and blogger, uh, self-funded the company for a couple of years. Uh, realized that, you know, what we had and what was very special was our local infrastructure that we had around the country, which we'll get into um, later mm-hmm. in the conversation. Um, but, you know, with that, we we kind of parlayed the infrastructure into really building a brand studio. Um, you know, it was cost prohibitive building a destination, but what we had was super special. And, uh, you know, from that point, we, we kind of transitioned to really helping brands scale stories and content throughout the country and helping them connect with consumers on a very authentic level of, of having people locally based that could really tell those stories um, at a level of authenticity that a transplant crew could never do just based mm-hmm. on them being local. So that was kind of the, you know, the, the beginning of Vimby and, you know, currently Vimby is locally based in, in over 80 cities, uh, domestically and internationally combined. We, we help some of the largest brands in the world tell their stories and scale social content. And, and it, you know, and we continue to evolve because, you know, the, the landscape is changing. We, we've had an incredible time through COVID where I think a lot of companies, you know, struggled to make ends meet and everything was pretty much paused. We had an opportunity to once again reinvent ourselves and 
do a lot of live productions and, and work with some large CPG companies through this time. And um, it's, you know, it's a constant evolution, but uh, that's the quick backstory. But it's, you know, Eddie and I have kind of steered the course and have been very, very fortunate with what we've been doing and have some longstanding clients that have been with us for several, several years. Dean, so that's fascinating. And that's one of the things you're kind of coming into it um, and looking at what you guys have up there is, is really the the variety of work that you're producing. And, and just uh, it's just really interesting how you're trying to get stories in just many, many different ways and many outlets. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's what it's all about. You know, we, we work closely with agencies that do a lot of kind of, you know, content strategy, media planning, um, you know, looking at a variety of content platforms. And, and certainly that's the future. Right. And, and so we, we've we become experts with versioning and, and developing stories that work within certain areas and, and, and truly have had just amazing success with content um, impacting brands, you know, KPIs, key performance indicators and really getting stuff out of the park. And, and we attribute that truly to the authenticity. And we, we kind of coined the term of sincerity marketing and, mm-hmm. and really helping brands connect with people in a meaningful way. And if from, from what I understand, then you still kind of continue your, your SoCal lifestyle and you're surfing, you know, pretty, pretty often as far as I know. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, you know, I would say, and Eddie as well, you know, we, we are very much in their kind of, health and wellness and a lot of fitness and we work out a lot and I, I surf as much as I can still, but you know, we, we both have kids and we, we kind of maintain that healthy lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Eddie, and, and so I'll turn it over to you. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your background and then, you know, maybe we can pivot from there and, and hear from both of you, like how you came to the cannabis industry and, and I guess start getting some of your initial, initial thoughts there. Yeah. Um, so I'm probably the maybe the boring guy of of the two of us. <laughs> Dean's, more, Dean's more of the creative guy for sure. I was I was born and raised outside of Cleveland, um, but I've been in Southern California now for God, I think this is my 21st year. Um, so it's certainly a different world as it relates to culture and cuisine, and certainly cannabis. Um, you mm-hmm. know, Ohio's just now becoming online more on the medical side uh, with the cannabis plant. Obviously, Southern California has been the pioneer and the leader for for decades now. Uh, but my background is more finance related um, and, and operational related, but more and more over the years, especially as I, and I joined Vimby, not right at the founding, but just shortly thereafter, uh, back in mm-hmm. 2009, um, more, I've become more of a uh, a marketer, if you will, with that finance angle, so to speak, over the years as, mm-hmm. as you know, ultimately what Vimby does, but definitely more of a finance and operations guy that, you know, and obviously the company, you know, any company, whether you're in marketing or, or directly in finance, you sort of need that angle as well. So Dean and I, our, our expertise and our backgrounds really complement each other well. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And uh, Eddie, I, I also kind of an interesting fact that I read about you was that you uh, were a motocross r- racer for <laughs> for six years or so. Yeah, I was, at, I was on a, I was on a motocross team um, when I was younger, about uh, 12 to 18, I think it was. And it's funny because Southern California, it's it's there's a, a lot of the top uh, top racers today. You know, they they're from this area or around the Orange County area. So it's interesting. I found myself back here, but I haven't been on a bike in so long. I I, I have I have two I have two boys, teenage boys. Um, I'd love to get them get them going somehow. Maybe maybe one day we'll go out in the desert uh, somewhere where there's a ton of land and get them on a bike. Fantastic, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Rod- Rodrigo. I you know. To also just uh, you were asking Eddie about you know how we got into cannabis, um, you know I, I think you know Eddie and I we work a lot at a high level w- within our company and, and explore avenues that we we see opportunity and, and Eddie likes to say we we like to focus on blue ocean opportunities of you know entering spaces that are you know kind of non compete you know you're you're not market competing but you're market creating and and we just mm-hmm. you know we you couldn't help but hear the chatter right and and just yep what was happening legalization in california um you know i we started exploring with friends that work at ad agencies and, and even you know we linked up with some large players in the cannabis space just to do some due diligence and we mm-hmm. certainly saw that opportunity and we you know we also realized that a lot of people like us you know mainstream marketers were not entering the space due to a lot of the federal um, 
issues within the market and nobody nobody publicly traded was even considering it so we we kind of you know looked into yep. the market and looked for gaps and opportunity and and really started exploring you know I'll, I'll let Eddie talk about you know some of the partnerships that we've created along the way um, to really help validate our efforts and, and you know have a, a good filter for the industry because we all know the uncertainty that exists existed in, in the industry you know a couple of years ago and things are certainly maturing but um, you know we, we as marketers saw one of the biggest opportunities of our career and just wanted to make sure we were aligning with the right people. And I, I think Dean, thank you. Because I, I think that's a great prompt uh, for, for sort of the, the first question I, I want to throw at Eddie, which is, you know, like you said, Dean, obviously um, there's probably still a little bit of uncertainty in the market. It's a growing market. That's for sure. But the more it matures, you know, looking at, the resource use that goes into cultivating cannabis, you know, sustainability comes up. And obviously, in terms of what we're doing here, we're, we're the Sustainable Cannabis Coalition. So, Eddie, I would love to get your input in terms of you know, how do you feel that sustainability practices will be important as the cannabis industry grows and, and it expands? Yeah, the, the simple answer, Rodrigo, is, is really twofold. I think first and foremost is more states and ultimately the federal government will demand in my opinion, adherence to the, the sustainable production mandates, right? As legalization becomes to fruition, it's going to be just mm -hmm. part of the program. It may not be the first item on the priority list um, as more states and certain, ultimately the federal government come online, but you better believe that the you know the USDA, which is the Department of Agriculture, or maybe even the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, will have some say in how cannabis companies cultivate. So it's going to be important from that element. Right. And then secondly, um, I think the consumer will just gravitate towards companies and brands that make sustainability a priority. Um, and they mm -hmm. and especially the newer consumer. Right. Ones that maybe are not have not been consuming cannabis, you know, as, as an adult, mostly or certainly the younger consumer. We all know the younger consumer is demanding more and more from these brands um, or before they endorse a brand. Um, they want to make sure that that brand or that company is no way compromising the environment or using resources irresponsibly. So it's just going to be a part of the DNA going forward, these large cannabis companies, whether it's mandated by local or federal uh, governing bodies or the consumer ultimately demands it. Yeah. And, and, if, if, and, and if I can piggyback on that, um, you know, for Eddie and I, too, we we as you know, in all consumer markets, you know, consumers, they're attracted to brands that focus on their sustainability efforts. And, and we, when we look at cannabis and we look at how independently every operator or brand is operating, you know, th there's not much collaboration when you look at the industry. So through our, our partnership with Cone Resnick, we, we really looked at, you know, how seeking out a company like SCC and, and how can we work with them to help brands collaborate and, and rather than operating independently, um, just do a better job through, you know, obviously storytelling, which we'll get into is an important thing, but, you know, what kind of a role can we play in, in reaching some of these brands that want to do better? And we look at some of those brands that want to do better as the brands that are going to be there when, when things really start to mature. So, um, again, as marketers, we, we look at sustainability as, as a key factor for any consumer market. And it's, you know, considering the negative news with cannabis and, and, how things are being grown and, and things that are always, you know, have a negative light on it through the news. We, we know the value of the plant. We, we, know, we know kind of what's coming and, and we just want to be a part of kind of that responsible approach. And so, you know, our efforts of getting into sustainability just seems like it's a no brainer. And it's, we believe it's going to be kind of a filter for who's going to be there at the end, because especially with the new consumer market, it's what they're looking for, right? If you want to commit yeah. to a new consumer, you, you really got to work hard to show them that it's it's again it's still a schedule one drug federally right so there's negativity still kind of attached to it and, and we believe sustainability is almost going to be a filter for brands that are going to thrive and, and it's important that they embrace it and i think that also brings me to you know preview a little bit of the the blog you you wrote eddie which is you, you touched on you know a couple of things which are you know, making your messaging authentic and, and personal to the consumers. And I think what you just said, it sort of resonates in that, in that respect, which is, you know, those companies that really seem authentic in their efforts to promote sustainability and cannabis are the ones that 
you know, will ultimately resonate with, like you said, the younger consumers and those that are a little bit more aware. Absolutely. And Dean, I think I maybe want to expand on that a little bit. Just why, why, why storytelling is so important into sustainability message. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's everything, right. And, and, and in today's day and age with the importance of content, content becomes marketing, right? So, you know, we, we believe that every cannabis brand needs to tell that anthem story. They, they need to get in front of perception and, and really enlighten consumers on, on what they're doing right. Um, and then from that, and we, we talked about this before, is, is the variety of platforms and, and content outlets that are there. And, and how do you start taking that larger anthem story and breaking it down? into bits and pieces and really, you know, doing things in a way that is compelling and gets consumers curious to, to dig deeper. So that, that overarching story, it, we believe is the driver as it is in any other consumer market. And we keep saying that because that's, you know, that's what we're comparing it to because it's, there's a reason why things are thriving in other areas. And there's a reason why, um, while cannabis is still thriving, right? There, the upside is that new consumer market, and, and you know, storytelling is going to play that role. And Rodrigo, if I can just let me just jump in on that as well, just to go back to something that sort of connects why Vimby is involved in, in this space. You know, Vimby, by, Vimby, as Dean mentioned, at the top, we have this local infrastructure of filmmakers, this content creators all throughout the country. And cannabis, right now, because you cannot build a brand nationally, right, because of the all yep. the states are not legal, of course, and every state, even that where it is legal, has different mandates, especially when it comes to marketing. So the only thing you have is local and community, and that is how Vimby started. That is the essence of our company, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. we ha you mm -hmm. have to make it personal, right? Whether you're talking about sustainability and, and how you cultivate responsibly, or you're just trying to connect authentically to that community and, and that local person, um, you have to do it in an authentic fashion. And, and that's where Vimby's toolkit and Vimby's infrastructure comes into play. And that's what ultimately brought us to cannabis. There is a company, for instance, True Leave, which some, some, of your, some of your listeners may know. It's a very large multi, uh, MSO, predominantly in Florida. Um, they essentially dominate the yep. market in Florida. They have over 50% market share. And they've done a remarkable job. And I think someday there'll be a case study on them, how they've really embraced their community locally. I mean, I mean mm -hmm. to dominate a market like Florida, and I understand. You know, they had a competitive leg up. They got going relatively early and they own a certain amount of licenses, et cetera. But it's one of the largest medicinal markets, you know, out there. Um, so they, they did it by grassroots local community messaging, right? And I don't know specifically how much they talk about sustainability. I don't think it's at the forefront, but it's, it's intertwined in there a little bit. And I think that's yep. been so critical for their success to really connect and resonate locally, um, authentically to that particular community, whether it's Jacksonville or Fort Lauderdale or Tallahassee or, you know, outside of Central Florida or wherever it is, they've done a remarkable job in connecting to their consumers on a local level. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I think it so, somewhat draw parallels or the, the parallel I was drawn in my mind is somewhat to the craft beer industry. It seems like those brands that even at a local level are successful are those that can connect to, to their community. And, and, I have you know, a little craft brewer down the street from me and, and you know, they've been able to make an impact in Salem, Massachusetts because of their connection. There's to the a lot of parallels and the, with the, the, craft, the craft beer community and, and cannabis, to be honest with you. And I, and I, and I would be willing to bet, uh, especially when federal legalization occurs, that there'll be some consolidation within those two sectors at some point. I, I 100% agree. So, uh, and Eddie, so I, want, I guess I want to follow up and, you know, in the context of storytelling and, and again, just sustainability, like, do you feel that current large cannabis operators are somewhat dropping the ball when it comes to sustainability practices or, you know, what's your, your perspective? Yeah, I wouldn't say they're necessarily dropping the ball. I mean, Lord, Lord knows they have their hands full just in simply in simply <laughs> trying to stay competitive and serve the communities and arguably one of the most challenging industries out there, um, to be honest. I, I don't even think arguably, I think it's definitively, in my opinion, the most challenging industry to operate. Because again, schedule one federally illegal substance that they're cultivating, <laughs> but there's some states yep. that obviously uh, have some form of legalization. So I think therefore it's unintentionally not front of mind for them, you know, and, and no one, whether it's a consumer for that matter, or a governing body currently is demanding it from them right now. 
Um, so right now it's just about operating within the various state legal guidelines in the most efficient way possible and generating tax revenue, right, for the states. Um, and this is really why, Rodrigo, the Sustainable Cannabis Coalition, the SEC, is, has such an amazing opportunity. They got to bring, you know, it's, it's sort of their mission to bring this topic to the front burner. And with various industry participants, whether it's a, a true leave that I mentioned or, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, manufacturers of even, you know, nutrients or, or, or uh, lighting products, et cetera, just bring that industry together, ha- have them have a viewpoint on the mission of the SEC and get sustainability to the forefront because it's going to be a mandate and of high importance in the coming months and years that that's undeniable. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that sort of goes back to another podcast I did recently with um, the folks at the GMP collective, which are also, also part of the SEC, which is, you know, really in the importance of not only, you know, saying that you're sustainable, but having somewhat the, the documentation to show that, to back it up. And like you say, is, as we think about the prospect of federal legalization, having that backup and having that, that you know, sort of the bite to that bark will be really, really important. Exactly. And one of the things that, that we do, I think one of the best ways, especially for the larger operators, and we mainly, when we say larger operators, we mainly talk about the MSOs, the multi-state operators, most of which mm-hmm. are publicly traded, obviously um, most of them on the Canadian stock exchange or the over-the-counter market here in the U.S., but when you're publicly traded, as, as, as you may know, or some of your listeners may know, you have to have earnings conference calls every quarter, right, to give an update to your yep. shareholders and the investment community. So one of the best ways to get to know these companies is to listen to those calls or read the transcripts of those calls. And to be honest with you, and I, I, I listened to them closely, and we just finished um, the fourth quarter calls that came out you know, in, in the last few weeks, and sustainability is to be honest with you, it's not. It's just not a word that comes up. It's not. It's not a message that comes up within yep. those calls, um, and those calls are the way for management to give commentary on operations. Obviously, economics, of course, but also just operations in general mm-hmm. to their to their shareholders and in investment community. And it's not. It's just not a part of the the dialogue yet, right? And and I think that's going to. I think that's ultimately going to change um, because it's not only going to be a requirement by the state. Authorities, but it's also going to be demanded by the by the consumer, especially the newer consumer, as we as we touched upon. Absolutely, and and I think this is a kind of a nice segue to to the next question, Dean. I'll, I'll pass it, this one over to you. And and you know, you obviously talked about you know, storytelling kind of being at the core of Vindi. And so, so, how do you see storytelling storytelling as a tool that MSOs or or even you know smaller cannabis producers can use to showcase? the importance of sustainability to them in order to attract these younger consumers and consumers that have sort of sustainability top, top of um, Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, that's to, to Eddie's point, when you listen to these calls, it's all about growth and acquisitions and footprint and, and, and just really expansion and, you know, looking at profitability and really that consumer market from a, a new consumer standpoint is really, it's starting to surface. And when us as marketers look at that, that's that's the opportunity. And you know, for us, it's it's all about storytelling. Consumers they expect it, they look for it. You know, and, and you know, this type of storytelling is, is a bit of an art form. It's kind of what we pride ourselves in doing, because if you can do it with great authenticity and confidence, um, that leads to a path to purchase. And, and we believe that you know, mm-hmm. once sustainability becomes part of a brand's purpose um, and, and their purpose-based attributes and strategy. And then it becomes part of the brand promise, which is where, the, where that story leads and where consumers, it's what they're looking for. It's what they're used to. You know, then a brand's purpose connects on an emotional level. And, and that emotional connection leads to brand loyalty. And it kind of, you know, once all those ducks are in a row, uh, then the brand anthem story gets shaped and told. And, and then, you know, that becomes part of your brand promise. And, and it's that, you know, it's a longer piece of content. Then you start digging in and, and getting into the, the bits of the brand anthem and, and which become marketing tools. Um, and then you start building mm-hmm. in media and content strategies. And, you know, from there you, you start working across the variety of platforms and, and that's really the intersection of, of good storytelling and marketing. And, and you know, we, we do believe that sustainability purpose-based messaging is, is where brands need to spend their time. It, it's really, it's the future. You're not going to be able to hide behind, you know, a really good grow, a really high end product. Well, how's it being done? 
what what you, what, do you, what do you stand yep. for? Where where are you going with this? What you know for me and, and Eddie as you know we're parents, right? <laughs> and we success yep. our, our kids know yep. what we do, and it's you know my kids. I have a fifteen year old. She's curious, and, and it's important for us to whatever we're going to do is is something that we can stand behind and something that we feel good about with our kids, and that that just comes down to it sounds you know just cachet but it's what's good for the planet what's good for our bodies what's where's health and wellness lie we we know that we're just on the edge of the value of this plant and and that's the exciting part of of where storytelling meets marketing and sustainability meets products is is really doing that job and it'll be a you know also a a thinning of the herd of people that are doing it right and people that have been able to not focus on consumer markets and just get products on the shelves of retail stores where consumers are just as tr- attracted to percentages of THC and and feelings that you're going to get, but you know it really what's next is 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 consumer marketing outside of the dispensary and and things hitting consumer markets in a way that consumers are used to. They're, you know we all kind of live in a zeitgeist of marketing and we have expectations and and consumer markets are evolving, right? I mean it's just things are are, are changing even more so in the general market. It's not about what's in our recycling bins anymore, right? It's about what are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? What are we going to purchase? What, you know, and there's, you know, a portion of America that really is based on price and they don't really chase quality and health and wellness, but you know, that there is a massive, massive market of people that, that want to live longer and, and want to do things good for their kids and, and want to make sure the planet's going to be safe. And it sounds kind of lame, but so true. And especially when you look at cannabis. No, I, I, I agreed. And, and uh, you know, it, it sort of brings me back to something that you said earlier, Dean, that I, I you know, sort of resonated with me and I thought was really interesting in the context of the conversation that we're having, which is, you know, cannabis, for better or worse, already you know, has sort of a stigma and negativity uh, attached to it because of, you know, where it came from, where it's been in terms of the war on drugs and so on. So, you know, the importance of storytelling and making sure you know the messages that you just said get out and resonate with people you know become even more important and and kind of carry even more yep. weight going forward yeah i mean it it, it really does and, and that's again we keep saying it but for you know a company like vimby to have that opportunity and, and to work with brands and, and granted we're not going to work with brands that we don't believe in right we, we do our do, own due diligence yep. that's you know, Eddie is one of the smartest people I know that look, have a view on cannabis that is just an incredible filter for our next step. And who do we want to align with? Who do we want to focus on? And it's not everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's some people that are, yep. that are smart, they're responsible, they, they want to do it right. Um, you know, the conversations with them are fruitful and they're really fun and interesting and they totally get it. And that's where we want to spend our time. Absolutely. And, and then it totally, totally makes sense. So my last question here is, is like you said, you know, there, there's going to be a long runway for, for the industry. Um, you know, I guess five years from now and maybe 10 years from now, I guess, where do you see sustainability uh, as being part of the cannabis industry? And, you know, obviously in the context of storytelling, how, how intertwined is that with companies' marketing strategies? So, and Rodrigo, I'm, I went to Case Western Reserve University back in Cleveland, and, and oftentimes I'm asked to speak on an entrepreneurial panel or maybe even have mentor-like conversations with students. And, you know, I, I tell them, um, I, I mention cannabis to them. And now, again, the majority of them are back in my home state in Ohio, where it's just now emerging as a legitimate industry that can mm-hmm. do amazing things. And it's, you talked about the stigma a second ago. Mm-hmm. That, stig- that stigma is being reduced literally every minute in states like Ohio, yep. right? Um, I mean, look at Oklahoma, one of the fastest growing medicinal markets in, in the world. And you would have never guessed that. Obviously, you know, New York just legalized recently or, or, you know, passed a bill to do so. But when it's states like Oklahoma and Ohio and ultimately when Texas comes on board, in my opinion, when Texas becomes legal, that's when, you know, federal legalization is is uh, is close by. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. But I tell the students to say, listen, look, look into this industry. It's not very often that you have an industry that is revolutionary like this. I mean, if, if you could be a part of alcohol back in the late 20s and early 30s, wouldn't you want to give that a chance, right? To have that opportunity, right? I mean, this yeah. there has not been a faster growing industry like this maybe 
since the mid to late eighties in the cable industry business in the cable television side of the side of things. So it's such an opportunity. Yep. So it's not very often that a new industry emerges that can directly influence sustainability like cannabis is about to, right? Because at its core, at its core, it's yep. farming. And farming impacts every level yep. of sustainability there is, right? And two twenty and two thousand twenty one is a lot different from when tobacco became mainstream or even alcohol for that matter, right? So if you farm, whether yep. it's indoor, greenhouse, outdoor, whatever, sustainable practices, they they, sh- they will be they will become a given, right? And the ones that can most authentically share that with the consumer, in our opinion, will become a leader. Um, every cannabis company, whether it's large, the MSO, the large MSOs, or even small, you know, ind- independent cultivators in a certain market, they have an opportunity to take a stand in this part of the industry and showcase their beliefs, their standards, their best practices to make sure this industry gets off on the right foot and you know, their marketing message and sustainability will most likely be one and the same, right? And if they can do that authentically, like like we mentioned and Dean and Dean spoke about, um, I, I think that's going to really resonate with the the consumer, especially that newer consumer, or that younger consumer. Um, and I'll, I think Eddie, Eddie said that really well. But for me, it's you know, consumers are getting more sophisticated, right? And and, and health and wellness for consumers um, is more prominent. So you know, I do believe that mm-hmm. it, it's going to be business as usual um, when it comes to social responsibility, sustainability, you know, growing well, you know, organic, you know, what have you, that, you know, consumer habits are, are going to drive these expectations for all brands in, in cannabis and non-cannabis markets. And, and I just think that, you know, as we're seeing industries evolve with consumer markets, cannabis needs to do the same thing. And, and I think five years from now, I do believe that it's going to be a level playing field on expectations across the board. And I, and I do believe that the cannabis brands and, and companies that are, are doing it right are, are going to be really well positioned and are going to cater to the expectations of this new this consumer in general, but especially the new consumer to the cannabis market. And I guess as I piece everything together now, it seems, you know, not only having sustainability at your core, being able to tell that story and the connection with the consumer. It just seems like as a business, it it also seems like the way to go. You know, it it seems like it will make you naturally more successful in, in the market from a revenue and potentially profitability perspective. Yeah. I mean, think about it. There, there's very few players in this industry that have built beautiful anthem stories, that 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 founder story, the you know, just the you know, what they stand behind. And, and that's the exciting part of, you know, where we want to go as a company is to is to be of assistance and to to help brands do it right because that that is what's next. And and some brands might not have that story, right? They're not ready to make that pivot yep. and, and do what most other brands in, in consumer markets have done because you have to. You have to pivot. You have to get uncomfortable and do things differently. And, and, you know, we've proven in other markets that consumers are also willing to pay a premium for better products, safer mm-hmm. products, you know, products that are, are going to cater to a, a healthier lifestyle. So um, it, it's it truly is what's next. And, and, and I think there's expectations that need to be addressed on consumer markets. And, you know, it, again, the brands that dive into this and do make that pivot and do realize that it might be a little bit more cost up front. But, you know, in the long run. Um, I, I think you you stand to really build something substantial, and not just you know something that would be compared to craft beer, but something that is compared to Budweiser, right? I mean, it's there, yep. you need those mainstream yep. products for every consumer, and then you're going to have those higher end products that are you know driven more health and wellness. But no matter who's in the industry and whatever they're doing, they they have a, resp- a social responsibility to to make sure that they're educating consumers and and telling their story in a way that makes people comfortable. Rodrigo, if I can make just Absolutely. one more last point um, for your listeners, especially. So, yeah, please. You know, ESG, which which is a very hot acronym, has been for a while, but even more so in the last even the last couple of years, which stands for environmental, social, and corporate governance. Um, some of your listeners is probably are familiar with it. So, it is, it is really the bread and butter, the backbone of any messaging nowadays with any brand, for that matter. And obviously, sustainability is a big part of that E, right? That environmental management approach. Obviously, social issues has been such at the forefront um, for years now, but especially over the last 18 months or so with certainly what's going on in the world um, 
and then corporate governance has always been a real issue on how on how these corporations govern themselves, both inside and out, and how, how they run their business. But the environmental piece of that is where the sustainability factor lies. So ESG is just it is just intertwined into marketing. It, I think it will be for generations to come. Uh, and sustainability is such a big component of that. And that's where cannabis can take a real stance as farmers ultimately, right? And and just mm-hmm. really yep. spread the message to the consumers and to the world that this is a legitimate industry that has best practices and looks after certain things and prioritize certain things, certainly over, over profits and profits are certainly important but prioritizes um, sustainability in a way where it's going to le- fully, fully, fully legitimize this industry. And I think it's, it, it's so important. And that's why we're so happy to be involved with the SEC. And, and I, I mean, I think uh, feeling goes both ways. I, I know, uh, you know all the members are, are super happy to have you guys on board and, and obviously have you know, your perspective into how to shape that messaging. So Thank you, obviously, in advance for all of that. And, and this has just been a fascinating conversation. I, I really, really appreciate both of you taking the time to, yeah, to do this. Pleasure. And to, to talk and we appreciate you. you having us. Yeah, no, absolutely. So today we had uh, Dean Waters and Eddie Van Pelt from Vindy. Absolutely great conversation. Thank you both. All right, you. Right. All okay, right. Thank you guys very much. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sustainable Cannabis Coalition podcast. If you like what you heard, tune into our next episode and make sure to check out our content on our website at sustainablecannabiscoalition.com and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Yep, we're pretty much everywhere. Till next time.